Oregon. Now, she's hoping FEMA will help her rebuild an uninsured house. What we'll get won't buy us another home, but it, it, it just gets me safe. The holidays because usually right give Kimberly a sense of clarity, of meaning. But this year, she's worried a Christmas break could be the reason she doesn't get answers soon. When I say survivor, I am, I am a survivor. God said, not yet, girlfriend. We got jobs to get done. Where, and you live nearby? Three mile away on the family farm. Outside aid groups rushed to Dawson Springs and to Mayfield. These were big downtown areas. Well, Bremen has absolutely stood to the plate. The volunteers have been astronomical. I've never turned so much food down in my life. Bremen, Kentucky is a small farming community, population 300, and yet this path even managed to find Bremen's most condensed street. It just beat the living tar out of them. This tiny town had 11 deaths. Think about that, 300 people, 11 deaths. A proportion big enough where every single resident knows somebody, plus the fatalities that don't make the newspaper. The dog was laying there on the floor. I found the dog Sunday morning. We buried it down there where the dirt is. I made a pine box and I put some fresh straw in for him. And uh, put a little pillow under his head, put a couple milk bones in there for a little snack along the way. Here even, this, like there are grain silos that have been ripped in half. We're near the end of the tornado's path now, but it keeps making itself known, unannounced. That looks like a factory that's missing a roof all of a sudden. Because think about it, as you take highways at right angles, this tornado is still on the diagonal, meaning every now and again, you're driving and what looks like the remnants of a stampede go from one side of the road to the other, marching across the highway in front of you. And at this point, you can't help but wonder, what would it take to rebuild your life from the ground up? And so throughout the week, ABC News has been compiling lists of organizations that can make a swift impact. For one, there's food. Feeding America actually has a chapter specifically devoted to the Kentucky heartland. They're taking cash donations to provide meals to people in need. Local governments are accepting donations of generators, electric cables. Fire Chief Andy Wade said New York City's fire department reached out to him to offer a brand new ladder truck, even though in Casey, Kentucky, there are not many buildings in need of a ladder truck. The Red Cross is taking donations and accepting volunteers to help shelter and clothe folks. But what aid experts say is crucial to understand here is that in three months, six months, many of these families will still need help. But then that's when you realize it wasn't just here. You know, it, it was, you know, several miles away. Other cities have been hit. They have, you know, lots of destruction just like we do. That is when cash funds come in, a pot of money that can still directly aid a family when they're putting in new studs or a new washing machine. The Kentucky state government is setting up a fund called the Team Western Kentucky Tornado Relief Fund. That is what Governor Andy Bashir is hoping will be a more consistent form of support for everyone who needs it. Okay, so I think we found the spot. This is the coordinates that we have for where this tornado actually ceased to be a tornado. So this is the spot at 1147 not even three hours later, we're finally 165 miles. It finally goes back up into the sky. And yet, as I look out on that peaceful spot, right across the highway, not 200 yards away, is a boat yard. It was the last thing ripped up by the longest track tornado in nearly a century. This storm did not ease up. It did not peter out. This 165 mile path will leave an indelible scar on this state. But there is still a chance, whether through neighbors, through officials, or through the rest of us, to at least help that scar begin to heal. thanks to the countless Kentuckians who gave their time during perhaps the most trying period of their lives just to try to help me and the rest of us understand what it's like to be fighting for your life. They talked to me in the hopes that others can get the help they need. Throughout this road trip, survivors kept telling me, I don't want this for myself, but I do have a neighbor. I need to make sure to get some help from the public. So with that in mind, those aid groups I listed 
We have links to those organizations in today's episode description. So seriously, you can just pull out your phone right now. You can click one of those links. ABC stations actually rallied together this week for this huge day of giving to Red Cross Disaster Relief. We can still add to that number. If you find this type of reporting valuable, let us know. If you want to hear more, hit us up on Twitter or Instagram at Start Here ABC. I'm Brad Milkey in Bowling Green, Kentucky. I'll see you tomorrow. America's number one news source. This is what being live is Free all Bradley. about. This is ABC News Live. All right, we're gonna move back. Let's move back. We're surrounded this by people no squeezing into this bomb shelter. We're on an urgent delivery run. With Not afraid to go there. So my question, Mr. President, what are you so afraid of? Breaking news, live events. This is the moment. Lift off. Oh, Streaming straight to you, anytime, anywhere. You just met one friend right here. You're watching ABC News Live. Thanks for streaming with us. Admit it. These days, what you need to know seems to change just about every day. What is it that you really want to know, need to know? To help you not just get through your day, but to make the most of it. Feel smarter. Feel better. Feel happier. Well, how about a third hour of Good Morning America? GMA3, what you need to know. Now streaming on ABC News Live. It's all about you. The ladies you love. The hottest topics happening now. There's only one place to find it all. You guys are having the hard conversations. I love The View. The most watched number one daytime talk show is The View. Now streaming on ABC News Live. It was a scary time. In the 70s, you had multiple bodies showing up in Los Angeles. There were so many murders happening. You had to have a name for it. Serial killer. There was a human head in there. This was premeditated evil. You have this clock. This person is going to do this again. It's me against the killer. Who's going to win? We'll see who laughs last. Pat. What came next was unlike anything they had ever seen. News honored winner of nine Edward R. Murrow Awards, more than any other network, including winning for the third straight year the award for overall excellence in television. ABC News is America's number one news source. With so much at stake, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one newscast and the number one program on television.
It was an extraordinary story. A computer salesman was supposed to report to prison to begin a 17-year sentence. They let him turn himself into jail with no escort. No one thought he would run. How do you evade capture for 25 years? How do you do that? Now, join the search, following the U.S. Marshals as they uncover new leads in a global manhunt. Can you help catch this fugitive? Have you seen this man? Have you seen this man? Have you seen this man? Listen and join the all-new hunt wherever you get your podcast. World News Now. And America This Morning. The best new video. <laughs> Breaking news overnight. Your money and concerns about inflation. The pandemic is not over. The stories people are talking about. You don't want to shave your legs? Don't. I was gonna say. And what to expect in the day ahead. From the top of the world, baby! ABC World News Now and America This Morning. Weekday morning starting at 2 a.m. Eastern. Up all night to keep you up to date. Right now, with so much at stake, Sunday mornings, this is the place. Taking on all the tough questions, straightforward reporting, no spin, no hype, no bull. See why Sunday mornings, more and more Americans are now turning first to ABC's This Week with George Stephanopoulos. Welcome to This Week. Live is all about. This is ABC News Live. All right, we're gonna move back. Let's move back. We're surrounded this by people squeezing, squeezing into this bomb shelter. We're on an urgent delivery run. With Not afraid to go there. So my question, Mr. President, what are you so afraid of? Breaking news, live events. This is the moment. Lift off. <laughs> Streaming straight to you, anytime, anywhere. You just met one friend right here. You're watching ABC News Live. Thanks for streaming with us. Good morning, everyone. I'm Terry Moran, and thanks for streaming with us. The Omicron variant is spreading at an alarming rate in the United States. President Biden issued a stark warning, saying even vaccinated Americans are at some risk and telling the unvaccinated their decision could be the difference between life and death. But he insists the country's not going backwards. We're prepared. We know more. We just have to stay focused. This warning comes as the demand for COVID testing skyrockets across the country. Hospitals are bracing for a surge of patients. Plus, how will this new surge impact athletes who are headed to the Winter Olympics? We're going to hear from CDC Director Rochelle Walensky on all of this in just a moment. Delta Airlines is now warning that the Omicron surge could cause staffing shortages and lead to, quote, significant disruptions ahead of what's expected to be the busiest travel day in almost two years. This is the FAA announces new measures to crack down on unruly passengers. Plus, the best ways to reduce your risk of infection this holiday season, advice from our medical experts for holiday gatherings, from masks to testing to table seating and what to do if you've got a small child that isn't eligible for the vaccine. But we're going to begin with the latest on the fight against COVID, with cases of the Omicron variant spreading across the country now. Dr. Anthony Fauci says that Omicron will account for 90-plus percent of new cases within a week or two. Around the country, testing sites like this one in Miami are overwhelmed in advance of the holidays. And there is high demand for tests in New York. Some of the city labs that have seen these extremely long lines, just look at that, are shutting down, citing staffing concerns. ABC's Trevor Alt has the very latest. As the Biden administration prepares to ship out half a billion COVID tests, demand for testing has already skyrocketed, often stranding Americans in hours-long lines. It's just a 
pure supply problem we're banging into. New York City will now open even more testing sites as cases there have climbed 640% in the past month. And Walmart is lowering its cap on how many at-home test customers can buy online, citing limited inventory and extremely high demand. The CDC is now reporting models suggest the number of new cases from the coming Omicron surge could top the highs we saw in previous waves. And this new wave could peak as early as January. I remember thinking to myself when we were going through the third surge, what are we going to do if there's a fourth? And here we are in the middle of a fourth surge in the holidays. Hospitals have very limited supply of the one antibody treatment proven effective against the variant in studies. And antiviral pills, which could help, are awaiting authorization. While it's possible Omicron may be more mild than previous variants, experts warn the sheer volume of cases could inundate hospitals, many of which are already overburdened. We have patients coming in all the time waiting in the waiting room, waiting in the hallways. Wisconsin nurse Sue Wolf tells ABC she's never seen anything like this in 38 years on the job and that almost all of the patients are not vaccinated. I get angry. I, I wonder why they did this, why they're doing this to me, why they're doing this to all the people that need to be away from sick people in the waiting room. I'm frustrated because I can't get them out of the waiting room. And as Pfizer and Merck await approval for their COVID-19 pills, which would help prevent hospitalization after infection, ABC News has learned the White House COVID-19 response coordinator told America's governors on a private call this week that that approval should be coming in the very short term. Terry. Good news there. Trevor Alt in New York with that report. Thanks very much. And President Biden promised action in the fight against the Omicron variant in his address from the White House yesterday. The president set a goal of at-home COVID tests delivered right to your door. We'll see about that. He also sent a stark message to Americans who are not getting the vaccine. Rachel Scott is in Washington with more. The Biden administration is preparing to ramp up its COVID-19 response, planning to distribute half a billion free at-home rapid tests in January to any American who wants one. We'll be getting these tests to Americans for free. And we'll have websites where you can get them delivered to your home. With the Omicron variant spreading at an alarming rate, the president telling vaccinated Americans they're at risk too. Because Omicron spreads so easily, we'll see some fully vaccinated people get COVID, potentially in large numbers. But these cases are highly unlikely to lead to serious illness. And delivering a grave warning to those who have refused to get their shots. Your choice can be the difference between life or death. The president acknowledging Americans are frustrated and tired, but insisting the country is not heading backwards. This is not March of 2020. 200 million people are fully vaccinated. We're prepared. We know more. We just have to stay focused. The administration also calling in a thousand additional military doctors, nurses and paramedics to help and tapping the national stockpile for extra supplies. Biden on the defensive when asked if his administration was too slow to respond. No, it's not because COVID is spreading so rapidly. If you notice, it just it just happened almost overnight, just in the last month. But the reality is, those tests in January will do nothing to help Americans who are lined up today, scrambling ahead of the holidays. The president was in close contact with a White House staffer who tested positive for COVID-19. He has since tested negative, and we are told he will be tested again today, Terry. All right, Rachel Scott, thanks very much for that. And a programming note, World News Tonight anchor David Muir, he's going to be sitting down with President Biden for an exclusive interview. That's airing on World News Tonight on ABC Tonight. Overseas now, the Omicron surge is threatening to impact the Winter Olympics in Beijing, set to begin in early February. The National Hockey League has decided to withdraw its players from the games. Our foreign correspondent James Longman has the latest. Hi, James. Hi, Terry. Yeah, you'll remember there was a lot of worry in the summer about whether or not the Tokyo Games could go ahead because of uh, the Delta variant. I was there. There was even concern that it could be cancelled right after it had begun because athletes were starting to test positive. Well, Omicron is now looming large over the Winter Games in Beijing in February. And because Omicron is that much more contagious than Delta, I think this feels like it's going to be an even bigger challenge. Uh, a lot of athletes are deciding whether or not they're going to go, and the National Hockey League has said 
uh, it's almost certain now they won't want uh, to participate. They won't send any of their players because so many of their players have tested positive for the coronavirus uh, or have had to isolate because they've come into contact with someone who has. It's meant that 50 games have already had to be postponed this season. So it's almost certain that uh, none of their players will be going. That'll heavily impact the Canadian and US medal counts, of course. The IOC, though, says that the games are still going ahead. They have a closed loop system, which is what they had when we are in Tokyo, which basically means that anybody participating in the games, officials, athletes, journalists, do not come into contact with people in Beijing. Uh, they're also asking that everyone who goes is uh, completely vaccinated and boosted, although they're not making that mandatory yet, and that everyone